Okay, moving on. Let's let's go through the uh, third and final uh, height field. This one is that icy, snowy uh, mountains one. Uh, so if you dive in the file, you can see the starting point is like again uh, just a simple height field uh, node. But let me show you one more way where you can like create your uh, your start basing shapes. Uh, this techniques uh, is a bit similar to the one that we used for the uh, dusty height field, uh, as it's kind of relying on the height field project node. But you can see it's a bit uh, different and more, way more, uh, way more powerful. So uh, this is the thing that I wanted to uh, uh, to build, and how I did that is that I I started uh, actually with uh, uh, just a tube uh, which has only kind of uh, polygon tube with only four columns, basically a, a pyramid, uh, and I fused the, the, the points. And I also cr uh, created a grid, which is, uh, well, basically the same size as the uh, as the height field. And I scattered and aligned some, uh, like some points. Uh, in this case, I only scattered uh, points on the geometry surface, and I used like coverage on, on, of one, as you can see. And so I get these, uh, these points. And I use then copy two points to copy those uh, uh, pyramids uh, over there. So if I go back to the to the project, now let me show you. So if I only project that, uh, this is the, the thing that you get. This, this is actually what I want. I want to like build some specific uh, mountain uh, uh, peaks, uh, even the big ones and then the smaller ones. But this was like too plain for me. Uh, again, I wanted to add some kind of details and, and variation to this. So what I did is, is I used that uh, first initial copy to points and I created uh, another one. Uh, this time the tube uh, was a bit smaller and I also uh, added a little bit uh, variation to it uh, with, a, with a mountain node uh, and transformed it uh, upside down. So I actually wanted to create uh, like a subtractive shape uh, uh, out of this. Uh, so I grouped uh, some of the planes where I wanted to scatter uh, those attractive shapes. I again scattered uh, some points, this time a lot more points than uh, than before, and I got uh, uh, this. Cool thing about using scatter and align uh, is that you, you automatically get uh, all these uh, point attributes which uh, align the shapes based on the on the on the normal or the, or the surfaces that you scatter the points. So this is the thing that I uh, that I got, and uh, the next thing was just to boolean it. Uh, so I'm just gonna poked a bunch of holes uh, into those uh, into those uh, base uh, uh, pyramids, and that was was my final shape for uh, for projecting. As you can see, I only projected the part of it, uh, and you get these holes over here, which end up uh, turning out as very nice. Uh, details uh, in the in the final height field. So this was kind of my main shape uh, that I that I have built uh, using like scatter two points with very simple uh, uh, pyramids. Now, moving on again. Uh, first of all, uh, let's work on on actually modifying and massaging those those big shapes. First thing was just a, a little bit of height field no, no, noise, just to break uh, like those really flat uh, uh, faces. So the height field noise was set to 62 amplitude uh, on on the add combine method, an element size of 191. Uh, noise type was changed to simplex. Uh, with just like a little bit lower uh, roughness. As you can see, there's no post processing, just like a simple noise added on top for variation. Next variation uh, was the detour to break those uh, those straight lines you got from, from projecting. Uh, the high field distort uh, by noise, I use the curl noise, amplitude 54, element size 360, and just increase octaves uh, from 2 to, uh, to 3 to get a bit more uh, variation. And then again, a little bit of a re, uh, remap just to kind of compress the peaks. I thought they were a bit too uh, uh, too high, so this was this. These were my uh, my settings, as you can see uh, over here. Uh, then a little bit of resample. I I wanted to resample it down just in to in and like blur it in that way a little bit. As you can see, we went from these sharp peaks 
uh, to something which is way more uh, uh, smoother. I ran another height field noise uh, on top of that, uh, this time uh, as the amplitude of 69, uh, I disabled the, the center noise uh, element size of 480, but I used Worley, uh, Sailor F1. Uh, and I also did a little bit of pause processing, like increasing the gain and reducing the, the bias. I mean, this is just the minor tweaks that you can just come up uh, if you play uh, with the values. So we went from this. Uh, to this, as you can see, it added a little bit of kind of secondary peaks here and there. Uh, for example, you see like how these uh, slopes are very, uh, very smooth and flat, and this added these secondary peaks uh, all over the uh, the height field. Okay, next thing that I wanted to do is to add a little bit of uh, of terracing. Uh, as you can see, they're very, very strong and big terraces, but but I was fine at this stage uh, with that. And as you can see, uh, I went from minim minimum height of 30 to maximum 200. And the things that I changed was on the smooth edges at 2.8. Uh, there's no ramp setup for either fading or or, or steps. Uh, I I use the high flare mask blur to blur the mask uh, at 22 point. Uh, it's going from like from here to to here uh, because I I wanted to blur the edges of the mask because I wanted to add a little bit of uh, noise to all those stairs to break it up. Uh, so I plug in both into the high field and the mask and use the high field noise, uh, which is set to add uh, at the amplitude of 333, uh, element size at 356, and basically most of the other stuff is, is left to, uh, to default. But uh, it, we went from uh, very straight and very kind of horizontal and parallel terracing to something which looks uh, a little bit more uh, organic. Still big, still huge, but a little bit uh, nicer. Now it was it was time to kind of shape those terraces and, and draw them a little bit uh, to return to the, to the main shape. Uh, I just ran one more distort uh, to give the uh, the erosion node a little bit more interesting shapes that it can work with. Uh, so this uh, was a curl uh, noise type distortion with amplitude of 41, element size of 285. I just increased the roughness a little bit and increased the number of octaves and sub -stab steps to get uh, something that uh, I thought look, uh, looked nice. I cleared the mess because I didn't need it anymore. And then it was the first uh, uh, ero erosion. Uh, so, uh, but before, uh, I know that I, wa I wanted to kind of uh, run it only on, on specific parts. So I did the mask by feature, uh, which I masked both by uh, slope, uh, as you can see, setting the sl uh, minimum slope to 18 and max slope to 18.3 with the, the default uh, ramp. But I also masked it by uh, height because I didn't want those slopes uh, in the in the bottom part. Um, so this is my final mask, uh, which I blurred uh, before running an erosion, and then I plugged it into the uh, erosion because I only wanted to erode the, uh, the terrace. I didn't want to kind of uh, erode uh, everything. Uh, so uh, I ran 20 frames uh, of uh, erosion. Uh, pretty much at uh, at default uh, uh, settings, uh, of course, turning off the uh, the visualization. Uh, so I got something like this. So we went uh, from this uh, to this. As you can see, it kind of chisels the the terraces, uh, but it also kind of leaves them as uh, as well. But you get these very nice transitions between those terraces, like small uh, patches valleys, ridges, everything. It just, I think it just looks uh, looks nice, especially for this uh, first pass. So now, uh, again, working in, in layers, the second part of the erosion, uh, the cool trick is to, again, uh, resample it. This time I resampled it again uh, by uh, multiplying it eight times to get 2,000 by 2,000 uh, uh, voxels uh, because I wanted very, very detailed uh, erosion uh, to be run next. So second erosion, uh, as you can see here, uh, while it calculates, uh, I ran it again for uh, for 20 frames. Uh, I think at default settings, uh, uh, 
only thing that was changed was like the post smoothing the debris because it was too harsh uh, for my taste. Uh, and I think that, yes, I increased the height durability uh, to 2 and reduced the thermal availability to uh, 0.5 because I wanted more uh, flow lines than actual thermal uh, uh, erosion. So, uh, another uh, mask by feature uh, after that to, uh, uh, to mask by slow because I wanted to add a second layer of, of very more small and more detailed uh, terraces. Uh, I was not that that worried with all these uh, details because then you're gonna gonna uh, like add snow on top uh, in the uh, at the end. So mass by slope uh, mean slope at 53, max slope at 72.9, but with this ramp, so I only select very very uh, like sharp uh, uh, slopes as you can see here. Then uh, terracing uh, those but at very small uh, terraces, uh, plugging both into terracing and into, into the mask. So minimum height for terraces was set to 27, max height 357, uh, step size was very small at 6, and smooth edges at uh, 0 0.2 without any uh, fade ramps. I did add a little bit of, uh, I removed actually the, uh, the undulations, so there's no none of uh, that. Uh, Cleaning the mask uh, and getting both the uh, erosion, uh, the big terraces, building those big shapes, and the small terraces into those uh, very sharp uh, uh, slopes. So the the final thing that was left to be done was was slapping the entire thing. Uh, so first thing is that I resampled it to the final resolution. Uh, again by uh, axis 4096 getting the final resolution of the of the height field which i want to work with uh, before slumping i have to build the uh, the flow field uh, which might take some time at that resolution but not that much time it's only a couple of seconds i'm sure that you can wait uh, but you can see it's a very very nice flow field uh, everything was i think left at, at the default settings in this case and after that i did a slump uh, also at default settings and i also did another slump so two uh, slumps in a row to get the final kind of snowy build up look uh, which i uh, which i like uh, which you can see here so uh, we actually went from this uh, and after two slumps you get uh, this so you get that uh, feel like there's a bunch of snow build up all the way but there's still some rocks poking out through the through the high field like these terraces here and peaks uh, uh, on on top uh, but to get a final look i uh, did one more mask by uh, feature masking out the the snowy the 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 flat parts so this was actually masked by both uh, slope uh, but uh, like inverted it to get the uh, the the flat uh, parts of the of the height field but then it was mixed with mass by curvature just so I'm sure uh, so i don't get the uh, the top uh, uh, the very kind of sharp edges of the uh, of the peaks I kind of subtracted uh, uh, those uh, with this ramp. Uh, I blur the mask uh, just a little bit, uh, as you can see here at the radius of two. And then uh, I use that as a mask for the height field blur, but this blur was actually set to expand. Uh, now why I did this? Um, because I wanted to kind of create that line uh, of the snow build up. As you can see what I get here uh, is this. And then when I expand that, I get this, uh, which is another level of detail where the where the snow uh, kind of builds up. So going from this, which is a very sharp transition, like jerk, to this, which could adds a little bit of build up on those uh, contacts between clips and uh, and snow. And I, I just think it's a it's a it's a it's a nice touch. I'm just kind of adding a bit more volume to uh, to everything. And this was my final uh, flow field uh, that I built uh, before caching, uh, because I changed the, how the height field looks uh, with uh, with this uh, expand blur. So I needed the final flow field to be built uh, again. 
uh, I disabled this time copy to mask so I don't have the mask uh, cleared node after that. So uh, cache and then again the same setup for for preparing the uh, the textures, uh, adding a quick shade for for previous, uh, and then uh, a cop to net for the uh, for uh, for the texturing. Uh, and like again, building the the, the masks uh, that I needed for texturing. First one is uh, actually the one I wanted to uh, I wanted to use for for snow. Uh, that one is mask by slope at zero and forty two, and this ramp combined with mask by curvature. So I want this this is probably the mask I want uh, for the for the snow. Uh, and what you can see here is that I also did some tweaks on the mask. So I dropped the high field distort node, but set it to distort the mask. So because I wanted to break out the edges a little bit, you can see here when you're masking by uh, by curvature, and especially when you're masking by slope, you get these very kind of smooth lines, which I didn't like that much. So I used the height field distort node set to distort the the, the mask layer, curl noise amplitude of 0.5 and a little bit lower uh, roughness. And I did one more uh, again just to so have like a bigger and smaller scales of that distort again. Sort layer mask, simplex noise, this time amplitude one, everything was like left uh, at default. Uh, so we went like from this to this, which is a way nicer uh, uh, mask. I copied that to a uh, layer, which is I uh, from mask to, to slope, so I, I can save it. And I did another mask by uh, by feature. And this final mask was the usual just curvature, computed with computed rage and linear uh, ramp uh, ramping for linearly from zero to uh, uh, to one. Uh, drop the visualize uh, node and computed the range so I get the uh, the mean and max uh, elevation, and that was my final. Uh, like icy mountain uh, height field that that you can see uh, here, which I think looks uh, quite nice and uh, and interesting. Cool. Let's go through the uh, textures next. <laughs> 